Hey, on the bench we have a new old stock. This is a SBE, or Sideband Engineers. Now this is not a sideband radio, but it's by the uh, SBE. It's a Formula D uh, 23 channel radio. Nice little radios. They made actually made the Formula D in a few different versions, um, including a 40 channel. But this is an earlier one. Uh, like I say, this one's it's not mine. It's a customer's radio. Sent it to me with a bunch of other radios. Um, he's a collector. But uh, he had not even tried this. He bought it new old stock. Just dropped it in the box with a bunch of other radios and sent it to me to have the electrolytic, basically had the electrolytic capacitors replaced and do a transceiver alignment uh, so it'd be ready to go um, to put into his collection or use, whichever he was going to do with it. Um, so he had not, the thing is though, he had not even tried this radio yet. Now, before I uh, replaced the electrolytic capacitors, I figured, well, it's brand new. I'll turn it on, see what kind of, you know, see how it works. Well, <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> and it is, it's not like uh, he got ripped off. You know, somebody sold him a used radio that they said was new old stock. It's obvious to look at this radio. Um, it has never been used. The, the bezel, I've got it taped up for a reason. It's not only in immaculate shape, it's in brand new shape because there, there wasn't a fingerprint on it to be seen. You can see the faceplate. It's you know, like the day it left the factory. So it is a new old stock radio. Um, but it appears something has happened to it. Now, you know, my first thought would be possibly an electrolytic capacitor because it is an old radio and I've seen that before. Um, I've actually seen new old stock radios that uh, not only just had a bad electrolytic capacitor, but it was so bad that it leaked. You know, externally the electrolyte leaked out of it. And in a radio like this, where some of the circuit board, especially the PLL area here, you can see there's copper. It's double-sided there. And the electrolyte will leak out and eat traces off of the board. Luckily, none of that's happened to this. <laughs> so, you know, that's a good thing. But it is dead. Um, you know, it turns on. Uh, help, well, let me reach up here and flip my switch on. <laughs> Might help if the radio is actually getting some voltage to actually turn on. Uh, so it does turn on. And it has, you can hear some static noise there, but if I run, uh, hook this up to a signal generator uh, at 100,000 microvolts, we're talking needle bending <laughs> amount of input signal into this thing. Um, yeah, it's, it, you can just barely, just start to hear that 1,000 hertz tone. In, if I put the signal generator on channel 19, you can just barely hear that signal on every channel. So, yeah, it, it's basically, that That tells me that that's just a little bit of RF in it. There's so much, because, I mean, 100,000 microvolts, that's like, you know, hooking the, <laughs> your radio up, you know, touching antennas with a transmitting radio almost. Um, you know, so that's just signal coming in and just bleeding in into the, you know, the receipt or the, uh, the audio circuit and little bits of it's make actually making it to the speaker. But, uh, so the first thing I'll check on something like that, where there's no transmit, no receive. Now it does switch over. I'm going to hook a mic up to show you, but it does switch over. So, you know, if I hook the microphone up, the transmit receive light that's hidden up underneath here in the tape, that does switch over. So that, uh, the transmit switching circuit seems to be working fine. So the first thing I want to check is, do we have any frequency generation inside the radio? Um, because a radio is not going to lock if the synthesizer circuit's not working. It'll go out of lock. So uh, that's the first thing to check. And sure enough, it's not doing anything. So this has a 10.240 crystal. Actually, let me remove this speaker. I just have the cardboard over this to make sure I don't go sticking a finger or a screwdriver or a test probe through it. Um, as you can see, these are one of the ones that have the little mounting bracket that's actually, this is actually soldered to the circuit board. And they actually put a little dot of glue. You can see right there some of the green. These were actually glued in there. But as tight a friction fit as they are, they really didn't need to glue. But uh, like I say, I always put a piece of cardboard over them to make sure I don't damage them. But, uh, so the synthesizer circuit in this, it's a very, actually, let me just move the camera, easier than me holding the radio up, um, is a very early synthesizer circuit. Uh, so here's, down here is our 10.240 crystal right there in front of my finger. But the, uh, the PLL circuit, most people are going to be familiar with, you know, if you have any 
technical experience with electronics and synthesizers and radios. If somebody says PLL, well, there you'd be expecting to see that one PLL chip. You'll notice it has a bunch of them. Uh, what three six nine? <laughs> it has nine ICs and you know a bunch of other parts that uh, make up the PLL synthesizer circuit here. Um, like I say, this is an extremely early solid state uh, PLL circuit. So it does not have a one chip wonder <laughs> or, you know, the black centipede, but only one of them. They did everything with individual ICs, uh, divider ICs, um, flip flops, um, there's charge pumps. So basically everything that would normally be housed in a single IC, if it was, a, you know, an, a one, what I call one chip wonder PLL, is done with individual ICs or multiple ICs. So, uh, Troubleshooting, the first thing you want to do, see if you have any frequency coming out of this PLL synthesizer circuit. So, if we look up at the oscilloscope, so let me get it right over there. So, what we want to look at, the input, okay, it basically the circuit starts here. Okay, this is a divide by 8 counter IC. Um, it's a 7493 series. So these are all TTL series. All of those ICs down there are all 7400 series uh, TTL. Um, but we need to actually find our sig you know, the synthesizer. The basic, the true beginning of it starts over here on this page, and that's the 10.240 megahertz crystal. So you know that's generated here, comes up, goes through this uh, oscillator right here, and then taps off. Circuit trace, they're using Sam's manual, they have these circuit trace numbers, which makes finding stuff on schematics very easy, but that's number 27. So if we come back to the synthesizer circuit, we can see that's actually the input here right at the buffer. So, um, and then, but like I said, the first thing we want to check is to see if this circuit's actually doing what it's supposed to be doing, or is the problem somewhere else in the radio. So always look for test points. So TP3 right here, this is where we should have because you can see that's where it actually comes in, comes into the VCO. So we should have a signal right here at TP3. And TP3 is a resistor down here. So let me get a scope probe here. Turn the radio on. The radio's on. And if I clip that onto that resistor, if you look over there at the scope, actually, let me reduce the camera out of the way here for a second. So I have it at 100 millivolts per division right now and you can see yeah it's flat lined. <laughs> so now we don't have to check directly at the crystal over here on this page. What we can do is, is just check at the input or the beginning of the circuit or right after the buffer because the IC, it's very easy to get to the pins of the IC because they're up here on the top side of the board. That way we're not flipping the radio back over, you know, one direction and over and you end up taking a chance of damaging it, especially if it's a brand new radio. You want to be moving it around as little as possible. So what we want to check is we want to check input output, input, well the input and output are going to be the same here because it comes in here, comes out, but you can see it's just on the bottom side of the board, it's just a circuit trace that connects to the next uh, divide by eight counter and then comes out here. Now in the SAMS manual here, this is actually, let me zoom down here on it a little bit. This schematic's actually a little confusing. Um, actually had a calculator out earlier. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad when you gotta get your calculator out to, to work on a radio. Because I checked here, I will tell you, this: the circuit's working to here to here, I'll show you. But the frequency I was expecting to see here was not what I got. I got about half of what I was expecting to see. And I'm like, what the hell, what happened to the frequency? So of course, TTL, uh, yeah, it's the way they listed this is kind of deceiving. Because like I say, it says divide by eight counter. Well, I would expect to see, if it tells me it's a divide by 8, I'd expect to see whatever signal comes in here, which is going to be our 10.240 megahertz signal, I would expect to see that divided by 8 over here at the output. That's not what I was seeing. <laughs> so you get the calculator out and you go, nope, that's definitely not it. Well, then you go and pull the data sheet. And of course, 
this is the kind of stuff that you don't use these type ICs really anymore. You know, they're kind of get they're old school. They're still used today because they're, you know, convenient little ICs, the 7400 series TTLs and CMOS ICs, you know, your 4000 series. They're, you know, nice little ICs for using for all kinds of stuff. But uh, like I say, there's just more modern ways of doing things. So you tend to start forgetting ICs, you know, IC numbers you used to remember pinouts on. Yeah, it's just a lot of this stuff has gone in one brain cell and out the other. And so when I'm working on stuff like this, a lot of times it's just easiest to pull out the data sheet. Um, at one point in time, I had printed out the, the cover pages or any, you know, pertinent information pages pretty much for all of the, you can see here, you know, like 54, 7400 series ICs and the same thing for the 4000 series. So when I'm working on this stuff, I can just run over pull the filing cabinet drawer out, grab the cover page to see exactly what the IC is, what the pinout is, and, you know, the general description. And, of course, you go down here and you can see, you use their maximum account length, a decade, divide by 12, or, you know, four-bed binary in these counters. The CKB input is connected to QA output. Uh, so, basically, what they're doing is, is they're doubling it. So, it's not actually divide by 8, it's actually divide by 16. <laughs> so... You're going to see, if, in the case of this IC, you would expect to see your 10.240 in and 640 uh, kilohertz out, or 0 0.640 megahertz. Um, and that's exactly what, we, what I see. So, come back to the radio now. So that IC is actually this one right here, and then the next IC in the circuit, this one here, is the next IC over. So... I'm going to hook up the scope probe to the input of the first IC, pin 14. Watch the oscilloscope. I think that's actually, uh, I'm going to need to reduce it because that's, ah, uh, camera's in the way now again. That's going to be like 4 volts, peak to peak. So it'll be way off scale with it at 100 millivolts per division. Okay, so here, there's the input coming out of the buffer into the input of the first uh, divide by 8 counter. Now if I go to pin 11, which is the output, we can see, hmm, off scale. Well, that's because it's been divided by 16. So let me actually just change the, get back on there. Wrong direction. Ah, darn it. Okay, try this again. There, now you can actually see it. So, there's the output of that first IC, and then if we go over to the input of the next IC, it's going to be exactly the same because, like I say, it just goes through a trace on the underside of the board. I can see there's the input, so exactly the same. There's the input to that IC, and that was the output from the previous, previous one. But so these two ICs are the same, doing the same thing. Um, so the output of this one should be that divided by 16 again. So if we go over to pin 11, let's see, 13, 13, 12, 11, hmm, flat line. <laughs> There's nothing there. Houston, we have a problem, which is a good thing because <laughs> we found a problem. So, yeah, it looks like a brand new old stock radio has a bad IC. So where it, the exact points where I was probing at. I'm going to get actually something here easier to point with. So I'd gone to pin 14 right here for the input of the first one, and then pin 11 was the output, and then on the underside of the board it's just a copper trace comes out here, goes straight over to pin 14 on this 7493, and that was where you saw me checking the input of the next IC, and then I came over here to the output, and there's nothing there. So... Uh, looks like we're having an IC problem here, um, and it's a, I mean, the circuit, <laughs> as far as ICs go, they're really not using much of this thing, so there's really nothing to troubleshoot, because you can see the it comes in. Now, there's, you know, three ground connections, and here's your power, so both of these are wired up exactly the same. You've got your grounds, ground, 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 and then here's your supply voltage to it, the five volts that goes to it. The only other real connection other than the input and out, output is this one wire here, and that was that where I, I showed you in the uh, description of the IC where they talk about running the out, 
the, the output out to another pin. That's actually this connection right here, which, which makes this a divide by 16, not a divide by 8. So uh, it looks like this uh, 7493 has crapped out. So I'll get this pulled out, pop a new one in. I actually have some sitting right here. I'll get a new one stuck in there, and uh, we'll see if this brings this back to life or not. Okay, so the radio is back up and working just fine now. The IC has been replaced. Um, while I was in here replacing parts, it's already had uh, the electrolytic capacitors replaced, and actually I've already even done the alignment. Because uh, once I got it fixed, just go ahead and get her fixed the rest of the way up. But uh, so here's the new IC that was installed right there. You can see it looks different than all the other ones. <laughs> Definitely newer. Um, now, one thing I did uh, notice in here, this uh, actually you can't see it for the speaker, can you? This electrolytic capacitor right here was actually leaking. So, it'll sh how well it'll show up, but it's actually green <laughs> on the bottom. That's actually copper, because remember that board's double-sided, yeah, you see some of that green stuff? It had started to corrode the board, so that's all been neutralized and then cleaned off. Um, and then I also replaced uh, three poly-dip caps. Um, you can see here, I've done a separate video on these things when they go bad. If we can get it to focus, you see it's split open, and there was three of them like that down here. So those, those were replaced. Otherwise, good working radio. So... Just really quick, I guess we can show this on the scope now. So originally we had, when we were diagnosing this, we had our output, or the input to that IC. So you can see, there it is over there on the scope. Uh, the radio back some, so you can see me probing here. <laughs> so there was the input, but we had no output on this pin. So you can see, we now have a 40 kilohertz signal coming out. We have our 600 and uh, 40 kilohertz going in and then 40 kilohertz coming out and then you can follow it on back through the divider even more. You know, here it is at uh, 20 hertz and we come over to the input here down to 10 kilohertz and then here is actually the output of the last stage, um, this is a, a 7400 IC, this is the, the gate, and this is actually the output from the entire divider circuit where it goes into uh, the uh, frequency phase detector. So uh, that IC was the only problem. Um, now, I think I'm actually going to do a separate video, not on this radio, this customer's radio will be heading back to him soon, <laughs> but... Uh, I think I'm actually going to do, because I got to thinking about it, this is a really good example of explaining how a PLL works. Um, we do it nowadays with a single chip. This one did everything, the phase detectors, the, you know, the divider circuits, just everything was done with individual ICs and separate circuits. So I think I might try to breadboard something like this um, using 7400 series ICs, because like I say, it's it's easier to for people to that aren't familiar with this type of stuff to try and you know, make an understanding of it because you can go through and probe each individual section it's kind of hard to do that with these modern one chip wonders because everything's done inside of one ic so but there you go there's the uh radio all back up and running now so i can actually get the uh tear the, take the tape off of it now and uh get the cover reinstalled on so you can see right there brand new radio like i say it's fresh out of the box actually a few fingerprints on there i actually have to clean off but otherwise uh so there you go there's a repaired sbe formula d